Yo. <clears throat> That's all, excuse me, Sagval. Alexa, get off couch. So that does. And we think that, so he can't stop for sun. <laughs> we have a window he's seeing. Alexa, get on couch. But anyway, welcome to today's podcast. Happy House Real Week. FTC. Fuck for crew. <sighs> At least I don't know. May have a guess, may not. Kind of, I did not know he was off today, so Britt may be joining us. I'm used to him. I know he's usually off Wednesday, so I'm used to that, but I'm not used to him being off Mondays. But, anyways, um. <coughs> I would say it's kind of a short week, but we'll just watch for you a 30 minute recap of F1 or IndyCar. But, uh, so. I've had this since lunch and I ate around one, so I've been working on this for four hours. I've been trying to reduce my pop intake. Yeah, but, um, but just look at the, I was wrong about the Bengals, unfortunately, but hey, just preseason, y'all. Just take a look at, um, I'm just going to keep buying my productions up because we're going to watch IndyCar after this. So first of all, let me actually, um, did our, yeah, I don't know why, but <clears throat> I can't get game capture capture for Roblox. I mean, I have to use the window capture. Speaking of Roblox, we'll be playing that Wednesday and Friday, um, I think... This is the schedule that's going to stick with us for a while. Two free days. Four dedicated days. Uh. <laughs> but anyways, um, McPherson playing, I, well, I guess I get that because you just want to keep those legs warm. 
all season. It's so, I know it's just preseason, but you at least want to have, I think, I think you can't look too much into this, the stats. But yeah, touchdown, field goal, touchdown, field goal, touchdown, field goal, touchdown, field goal, field goal, touchdown. So yeah, um, you probably don't want to look too much into the stats, but at the same time, you want your uh backup, just in case we need him, because players get hurt, unfortunately. I like to see your backups at least get a few wins in regular uh, preseason because they get some confidence that, hey, maybe I can do this if I need to if Joe Burrow gets hurt. Um, I always believe in having a good backup. I always believe, um, like, what I really wanted was for uh, Atkinson to mentor new players. Still 0% happy about Babcock being the Blue Jackets coach. Um, he has a very questionable history. And I honestly don't think Brad Larson is doing that bad of a job. He did the best he could with all those injuries. I think the Blue Jackets have the most main losses, but we'll talk hockey later on as um, we get closer to hockey season. Uh, is that Brett replying or is it just, oh, it's just my private server for notification. <laughs> I like how the thumbnail in my private server is me shutting my closet doors. Alexa, get off couch. Okay, that's better. Anyways, um, yeah. So that was that. Alexa, stop. You got some smart plugs, and sometimes we're not very smart. See, it's funny, the, uh... The umbrella I got, I was, I mean, I don't mind it, it was just one of the but I was hoping, like, the Chippy Nasty one, if this, uh, thumbnail of Eraser put out for YouTube, uh, I have multiple IndyCar logos, but one is enough. Um, so yeah. I like how I've been watching so many racing highlights about YouTube is recommending Days of Thunder. In their movie section, that's uh, pretty. That's pretty interesting. But um, <clears throat> very good race, almost top of NASCAR race. But I still think IndyCar was better because of the last of first with Scott Dixon. But as you see, Pelosio got a penalty. Let's go racing in Indy. This is the Gallagher Grand Prix, and Graham Rahal with a great start. Lungard is being challenged on the inside. Three behind. I mean, that was a great start by Ray Hall. Beautiful, like beautiful start. Francesco, baby, all the way to the lead. Uh, oh, his excuse me. Best start. He's side by side with Ray Hall, and Dev takes the point. Unbelievable! This driver has never qualified in the top six. He's never even had a a sniff. I think that was podium, fair from Dev. So hungry to go to the front. Good heart racing. As two arrow McLarens slide around I think that chicane is too oh, well, narrow for soft cars to go side by side. Actually, it is. You'll see when we watch the uh, Ryzen 200 of a brick yard. Yeah, see, that was below. Like, how's that not a penalty? That is clear causing a collision. Right there, he makes contact. That is a horrible contact. Oh, that's terrible for Leader and his team. 
Oh, Andretti contact. Steinbrenner. That is Alex Pelot, and championship Dixon. leader, and his teammate Scott Dixon. And Newgarden was Newgarden. totally blinded, so I... Terrible for Newgarden in the he was in a blind spot, so I don't understand. Out the number two up on top of the number 11 of Marcus Armstrong. You see that yellow and red DHL Honda Roman Grosjean found reverse. He's going to be able to get back around, but so much track position loss. I was just about to say this is exactly what Newgarden needed until it wasn't. Alex Pelot had contact to the right front, an opportunity for Newgarden to gain points as the AMR safety team. You need to be careful here. They got about 1,650 pounds to get off of Marcus Armstrong's right front. Three Ganassi cars involved in that. Hello, Dixon. I mean, honestly, there is nowhere for we saw him to go. We saw Herda. Uh, Rhea on the left. This evolved. Oh, uh, he got a puncture. Probably ran over some debris. Me, I need to get. There are massive championship here comes the field here. diff. Here comes the field. They need to get it started. You hear Tim Sindrick. He knows how important this is. They do not want to lose a lap. Kevin Lee, this could be championship right over if he goes down a lap here. And there's the front of the field. Five seconds. And before the race started, Joseph had a I mean, I don't understand why that was a penalty up below. Sure <laughs> you can see the NASCAR garages. Oh, uh, well, Harlow, excuse me. That's Tim Sendrick saying, be ready for the mess. Joseph told me before he climbed in the car, I'm hoping they all crash in front of me and I can just scoot to the front. <clears> Unfortunately, <throat> they crashed not far enough in front of him and he was a part of it. Don't understand why the car was so long. What a hectic opening lap. Check I mean, Polo should have got penalties here. Watch that blue and white car of Alex Polo is drafting up on the two Aero McLarens there with Marcus. Armstrong Polo opts to go four wide. There was here. no reason to go four wide on lap one. And then I think Armstrong just turns across the bow of his teammate. Maybe and Dixon got into the back of Polo. I mean, I don't know how you Look blame Marcus ahead. Armstrong for that. You don't go oh, four Armstrong wide on lap Dixon. one. Ah, uh, boom. Up ahead. His teammate. Like, I was too upset to hear my commentary. Uh, the bow. <laughs> like, Max. what the hell was Polo thinking, man? And then I think Armstrong just died here. McLaren's there with Marcus Armstrong. Polo opts to go four wide. Yep, this would leave a championship. Backs Why would out. you go four wide? And then I think Armstrong just turns across the bow of his teammate. Maybe and Dixon got into the back of Polo. Even okay. heard a really. Oh, sorry, you oh, are. Armstrong yeah. Dixon. Uh, really had no idea what was going on. So got into Dixon he was probably focused on the cars beside him. Right. This is from Joseph's Hitachi Chevrolet. Check up, check up. So Joseph Newgarden unfortunately finds himself not on the lead lap and is playing catch up. I mean, it was an absolute joke that that was a penalty. To Alex Polo with just three races remaining at the end of today. It's just. <coughs> it's just insane, man. One of the reasons for that is probably to bail off the black tire, the harder compound tire, and opt for the Firestone Red. Softer. If you're a regular to these podcasts, you know that. Um, the race today. Or my vlogs on IndyCar, you know that I've never been. I've always and questioned risk control. My guess if he joins it out, he will, because it's such last minute, and it will see us off today. We both, we both just shook our head at some race control decisions, but I do like, what? So... Let's go racing! And we don't get to say this very often. It's Devlin D. Francesco. It's just weird for NASCAR have a restart zone so far away, and yet it was so chaos. Look at the challenge here on the inside from Alexander Rossi. That's on Christian Lundgaard in the black car on the right of your screen. That blue and orange McLaren going by. The reason NASCAR moved for uh, start so restart so excuse me was to create avoid chaos, not create chaos. Sorry. Here he's all over the back of Rossi. Rossi has to turn narrow there. Four, I love all these. I like all these really drone shots we've been doing. It's probably better for Ryan because you're not running um, jet fuel in a helicopter. And I think drones go places that uh, helicopters can't. 
and it was coupled with his 2016 victory of the Indianapolis 500 I love to win again at the Brickyard. It was special. I but wish I had ever spokesperson. Well. Well. Now I'm big fan of him. Mahomes being the spokesperson, but um, they are doing stuff to help hunger with Finney America during the Cindy Car season. Alex Pillow and Jack Harvey in the top ten. Great to see that third RLL car up there as well. That's all three of them up in the top ten. We talked about the month of May these guys had at the top of the show. The Grand Prix was strong. It was the 500 where they struggled, but now Graham okay. Rahal all over the back. Look at Graham. Must get happy hells for a week. Um, beautiful pass by Graham. To the front where he started. And Alexander Rossi on his teammate. In I don't know if just pushed past because. NBC got rid of a cool graphic. They used to, it used to turn blue over time. And that's how you know we're all pushed to pass. So, I don't know if he was on push to pass for Pretty cool to know. But, you know, it is what it is. Quick ride there aboard the high V Honda. It's getting fast and frantic. McLaughlin in that bright blue car is coming up on the back. And Di Francesco, he's gone back another position. Rossi is the man on the move. So. This is why we've been saying that the red tire, probably the preferred compound. But like James said, you have to run both. How long will they keep Devlin Di yeah, Francesco? Yeah, you have to run for red and uh, clearly for alternate, for alternate and for primaries. You're looking at the American Legion Honda of Alex Pillow, the championship leader, who I would, it's like F1, if IndyCar had two, or if IndyCar had three tire compounds, and F1 would get run at least two. Uh, pretty straightforward at first, but DeFrancesco is starting to get his elbows out a little bit. I'm sure Pillow is thinking to himself, uh-oh, I've got Newgarden down, but not out. A lap down is Newgarden. Pillow could literally just cruise through the rest of this afternoon and he just narrowly avoided a much bigger situation with car to car contact there. Now Polo gets passed into turn one. I mean I don't know why Polo was left to drive like a jackass and not get penalized with avoidable contact. <laughs> and that's an obvious penalty for taking the equipment with him. And trying to do a little bit different. And then meanwhile, we see issues with the AJ Foyt car of Santino Ferrucci. He left with the air hose attached. So that's tangled up. They've got to get that sorted and losing all kinds of pressure. Kevin and that. the gun. The gun was wedged under the right front wing as the AJ Foyt crew desperately trying to free. Because that's penalty is because the gun can just fly in. Possibly kill someone. Right so that's why that's a penalty. The safety thing from the pit crews, uh, any media on pit. Obviously, officials, because any car doesn't have the cool thing I love about One cool thing about NASCAR is we have video officiating. I wonder if any car would do that, because not only is it cool bit of technology, but it makes it safer for officials, so they don't have to stand in a box. Obviously, we wouldn't get rid of equipment penalties, because you still got media and pit crew members set back. Could be seriously harmed or God forbid killed red, with uh, so a, a flying hose or drill. Teammate, but with Rossi out there right now, so on the black tire, Award is going to be able to reel him in. And he comfortably got out. He being Alexander Rossi comfortably got out ahead of that bright blue car you see in the back. It's just interesting that we only got second. I don't. I just think strategy. I think he needed another so yellow with Scott Dixon's pace. So McLaughlin surprised me a bit. He went red, red. So he still hasn't satisfied the tire requirement as the rookie, Linus Lundquist now. Down I think he's just lane. a bit Swedish. <clears throat> I mean, I can't speaking. tell by his helmet at all. Anyone uh, try to apologize? Um, I'm missing it. For next year. A lot of people are talking about Lundquist in a second IndyCar race. Very few pit stops for experience. He's in and out. He's moved forward so far in the first stint, so Michael Shank continues to be impressed. Yeah, well done. The leader, Graham Rahal, dives into the pits. Lap 24. That's so. how far he could take these alternate tires. That's a big step. He had 2.8 seconds on his teammate, Christian Lungard, who now goes to the front. Lungard will have his head down now, trying to click off the quickest laps possible. 
And Graham has been so, so happy of, with his race car's pace on all Yeah, I mean, Lily so Race fought Ray Hollister's going to win because he's going to keep cycling out to the front of a pack. Think about the crew on the 15th. But the he kept, but he got unfortunate. I don't think he was able to save fuel entire as well as um, Scott Dixon was. Down pit road at Indian. You're looking for Alexander Rossi in the background. Here comes Rossi. This could be tight ish. Maybe not. Looks like Rossi will have the point as Graham exits and accelerates. Oh, yeah, it's, it's going to be close. close. I think pit speed's only 45 for the lead off of Road Horse. Alexander Rossi compared to 65. With that delicate dance. Rossi on the oval, but there. I thought he'd be firing in a little bit. So for oval, that's got to seem like you're just crawling, man. <laughs> that's got maybe going back to the oval. Which means IndyCar will probably go to Milwaukee instead of going to IMS for a course twice. I think the second race at IMS was just scheduled for alert until we got a new track on the schedule. Down below, Graham Rahal, the onboard. Up top, that's Lungard exiting the pit box. They should be somewhere down. Like, Near turn one. If you would, like, I honestly thought that Rahal was going to win. So every time I saw Dixon believe, so I was like, Graham's going to recycle to the lead. Or cycle, recycle, cycle, whatever you want to call it. Um, we probably turn the cycle to the lead. Straight out of the pits on the Aaron McLaren driver. And he thinks he may have an advantage on his teammate. We'll find out. Rossi went a bit wide coming off of four. Not expecting that attack so. on the red tires from Christian Lundgaard. Here we go. The blast down to turn seven. Defensive from Rossi. Lundgaard to the outside. Outside. Can he switch back here? Switch back. Lundgaard's looking for an opportunity. With some of uh, Andretti's strategy, I can kind of see why Rossi's left. Or uh, McLaren. But um. Great job from Rossi. The saw radio transmission from Christian Lundgaard maybe talking about Alex fading back in the break zone there down into turn seven. I think what they're telling him, Ricardo Nolte on the radio with Lundgaard is saying Rossi's on black, so keep the pressure on. You can see Lundgaard only one lap out of the pits, but he's still hanging right on the tail of this Aero McLaren. Now Christian Lundgaard, he started on those alternate tires. Here we go. He hasn't satisfied it yet, but Lighting up now, it's going to be a race on the brakes. Alex so deep on those primaries, but the extra grip of the alternates makes that move happen. And for fresher tires. Scott Dixon finally dives for the pits. Yeah, Dixon was hoping for some more yellow after having to pit as part of that accident. That New Garden <coughs> Honestly, so we fought. Dixon will come in, but I think he'll have to make two more stops to get to the end. You also thought this uh, green, 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 green stuff was going to benefit Ray Hall. I did too, and then I saw the foul pit stops. And I do have a new video coming up on my, um, He's got another set of sticker reds in his back my YouTube, along with VODs. We see two McLarens in. Pato Moore at the top. Alexander, sorry, at the bottom. Alexander Rossi at the top, Dylan. And Rossi was on the primary. Yeah, you only get a switch him out of tires, so. So they'll put a U set of alternates on for Rossi, Kevin. Sometimes they have to go to U tires. But not too bad. It's another set of alternates. They are used. Remember, the vaunted Arrow McLaren team has not won yet this year. They got a couple of chances today. Looked like Rossi's right front. So, yeah, you thought Ray Hall was good. The wheel nut back on as Palo Award grows his advantage over his teammate. Here comes Roman Grosjean who will blend with Pato Award. Grosjean currently sitting 10th. Here's Colton Herta. But I just... Again, Kevin Lee. I wonder how Herta got a puncture to start for race. I don't really think there was... Stop, they still got a lot of track position to try to make up. Alex Palo from third is on pit lane. I wish we had more access to onboards. The driver that's averaging three like F1 TV does, but results this season never finished worse than eighth and is in the mix for another good result today. We'll have to after we watch this video full, we're gonna go back to start um just a free second and see if I can see where her to got that puncture. 
right at the very end of pit lane, Scott McLaughlin gets out and he's right behind Alex Pillow. So, 43 to go here at the Brickyard. Stay out, Graham, stay out. The call is to stay out for the race leader, Graham Ray Hall. I think that's Good what caused him to race bit of fair. Gap between him and Colton Hurd is the next car on track. Graham just coming through the last corner on the racetrack. But look at this battle right here. Hello and Rossi fighting it out. Rossi with the upper hand at the moment. The championship leader. Yeah, well, I should see when we go on to NASCAR. But the Gallagher Grand Prix. He's led 31 laps today. We're expecting him to pit any lap now. He has been in control of this race. And now he dives for the pits. He knew when he was catching the tail of Santino Ferrucci that this is probably the time. Dylan, Graham Ray Hall will come. The pressure is on the crew. It is, and, and you're exactly right. They wanted to make sure that they yeah, didn't slow down too much with the traffic. They'll go to a set of used primaries here. This may allow them to kind of short stint this second or the second to last stint here as they went. Sorry, we're supposed to be second. We're supposed to be second last side of last side. James, you know the feeling, the anxious so. moments when you're a driver and you're looking in your mirrors and you're thinking, come on, just. Let's just be smooth. No bobbles here, guys. You thought he had it. On that one. The, the motto in pit stops is uh, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. <coughs> I mean, obviously, and Dixon so was going to pass do, him. Don't let the pressure of the situation get to you. The 15 crew did a phenomenal job there. It wasn't the most lightning fast stop you've ever seen, but it doesn't have to be. It just can't have any mistakes, no issues. And this is a great, great pit stop from the 15 crew. Now Graham just needs to put his head down. He's got like, lots of clear racetrack in front of him. Look yeah, at yeah, that clear, clean air, fresh tires. Down, um, try and open that gap up to Lundgaard. That's going to be the next exchange that catches our focus is when Christian Lundgaard stops again. Where is it going to be? Let's go for a ride on the high V Honda. So he it's just on interesting. Those reds, and just like Graham Ray Hall was in control, now the balance of power falls into Christian Lundgaard's I lap. honestly think he also has a great gap in front of him. Maybe Clean they have to use reds. Well, well again, obviously Santino we did, but up front, taking a look at the Firestone telemetry. Maybe they just didn't feel like nice um, they needed to trail. Nice smooth throttle control. Use and them. The decision is in Christian's hands. How's your pace? How's Don't forget, first, or oh, sorry, Tell tomorrow was the only time we got life at four. But this high Honda might be looking to pit. Here he, here, is. He, here he is. That is it. He saw that traffic coming. That was going to slow him down more. They saw Graham's lap time on those primaries. So now in the driver's hands, hit the pit lane speed markers absolutely spot on. We're seeing a brake balance adjustment. That's what he's doing with his right hand there. Going from used tires to new tires. He's predicting already what it's going to be like making that brake balance adjustment, the percentage of the brake pressure that goes front to rear. Now, Dylan, he's in the pit box. And the 45 boy is going to need a perfect stop here. The blend is going to be really close. The Delta is right on the number. They'll go to a used black set here for Lungard. They need to wait and get the fuel in, and then we'll see where he blends when he pulls uh -oh. out. That fueler was shaking his head yeah. like it was taking him a little longer. Oh, here comes Graham Rahal out of turn 14. 11 seconds on the stop to Graham 7.6. This is going to be an easy one for Graham Rahal. The yeah, question just, is, is Hato Award going to get by the 45 as yeah. well? You the see that orange and black McLaren did it come the out. right hand side of your screen. He's going to get him. What yep. happened to the fuel fill? That did not go to plan as for the high Honda. They wanted it not to. Not did not go to plan. So. He's now lost second place. As the Arrow McLaren Chevy of Pato so fortunate, but sometimes that's there. racing. Seven and a half, eight seconds instead um, over ten. You just Here is Scott Dixon. He leads this race. He last pitted on lap thirty-two. <laughs> if the numbers work out and everything goes his way, this is not out of the realm of possibility for Dixon to win this race. I mean, he surprised us once again, Hitch. I didn't think it was going to be possible, but once again, Scott Dixon has figured out how to go fast save massive amounts of fuel his lap times are is it totally competitive, competitive. He's yeah there's different and engine in the car Ray Hall, i only have one go here. one or two and more laps he stay he the one all we here which he, he, he set the record for the most it's super special when you live it feel you can use the curve race his first win on the season but it'll be the 19th <laughs> consecutive <laughs> year with a victory he currently holds the record he'd break his own record today if he was able to get that so potentially a two records in one a nice twofer for the number nine it's got dixon <coughs>
Scott Excuse Dixon, me. a little bit of lap traffic. Stingray Rob right in front of him at the moment. And no changes, we'll be ready for you. No changes, we'll be ready for you. As says the managing director at Chip Ganassi Racing, Mike Hull. And Kevin, I wonder, what do they have for tires? What are they gonna bolt on to the number nine here? to go 26 laps to the finish. I think, and if I remember right, we went for primary. The softer compound oh. red side while fires to Sotos, and that seems to be an advantage. They can last, although Dixon, maybe he was getting Sorry, the awesome doke He told me yesterday, I think we're better on the primaries, but this has worked, so it could be an advantage for them. He's got to save a little bit of fuel to make it home, but might be this the day that Scott Dixon can extend that season win streak to 19 final stop you know the pnc bank crew is almost always flawless can they get it done this time as well they've got to get all the fuel in there as they can and he's <coughs> away yeah you and you always want to make sure you get all 18.6 gallons in, in there was just under of the last seconds, pit stop seven seconds that's a that's a big amount of time to make up dixon's so good at saving fuel and driving fast graham has a monumental task to close down over five seconds and the pit stop was perfection. Here at the Brickyard in the Gallagher Grand Prix, how is this going to unfold between Graham Rahal, Alex Pillow, Scott Dixon, as we see another RLL driver, this is Christian Lungard. Big opportunity for the crew here to try to make up from the earlier loss for Christian Lungard. He's about a second behind Pato Award. Can they work some magic here on this, their final stop? And Ricardo Nault said, yeah, we just need smooth stops. We don't need anything fancy, just routine service, four tires, fuel, oh, used yeah. rights for Lungard. Kevin, Otto Award is up further along. Sorry, to the high B car. He can beat out Lungard. He will just Whoa. nose in front of him. This is huge. That was close to unsafe for Luis, man. Hint. This is going to be a good scrap here between a Chevy, a Honda, a McLaren, and a Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan car. Meanwhile, to the right, look who's coming into picture. Alex Rossi in the blue and orange McLaren. He's going to come out just behind both of these oh, cars. Excuse me. Christian Lundgaard on the alternates. Rossi on the alternates that are warm. Meanwhile, Scott Dixon has climbed all the way back up to third on this pit stop rotation. And the pressure is now back on Graham Rahal and his team. He had to. Scott Dixon was the fastest car on track. That gap was falling. He's still going to come out well behind the number nine. The 15 crew needs a fire stop, Dylan. They do indeed, and they'll go to used reds here for their final run of the day. Wanted to keep Graham out there just a little bit longer, try and make this a short fill if they can. Small front wing change. We'll see how close yeah, I mean, that's where it hurt Graham, having used tires. Right. This is refreshed tires car. of he hasn't um, been serviced yet. He's looking for his stop there. He sees his team guys, gets out of the way. Of well, fresh ish. Meanwhile, to the right is of the Scott Dixon. And blue PNC Bank Honda. The six-time champion, Scott Dixon, is going to cycle to the front. With that sneaky little smirk on his face, he beat us all today. Didn't see this coming when Dixon had to pit on just lap five under yellow. But he is clear of Graham Rahal by probably five or six seconds. 20 laps to go. seconds between Dixon and Graham Rahal, let's learn more about the driver of the 15 with Dylan Wells. So he's been a little bit animated on the radio the last couple laps because of these two lap cars. I believe uh, it's one of the Hunko's cars in front of him, and I think Marcus Armstrong, the other car down the road, Honestly, it's Augustine Canapino in front of him. And he's asking them I think IndyCar needs for F1 for all of, of so a mandatory blue flag, and not for optional. Not teammates, so nothing's guaranteed, but they are not right now, awful, so but on road courses. Graham might get some help out of Canapino, but if Chip Ganassi Racing hears that transmission, they're going to tell Marcus Armstrong, Dixon's teammate, you do not let this guy by. Here's some right hole radio. Have a listen. 14 to go. They're still telling Scott to save on the radio. Let's keep pushing. 78 needs to let me go. We're working on that copy. That, that was obviously slightly delayed. He's saying the 78 needs to let me go. Canapino has let him by. I mean, it's no, always delayed going. because, Armstrong you know, Kason drops a bleep for drops an F-bomb. You can't drop an F-bomb on national TV in America. You hit it with Netherlands. You can say whatever the frick you want if it Netherlands. Exactly. There you go. Took the words out of your mouth there, Townsend. Once you're lapped down to the full field, you are, as you heard on the radio, blue flag eligible, which means you can get that command from race control, and then you have to let the car behind you by. Canapino didn't let him by. Oh, I'm sorry, NASCAR's an optional blue flag. To make that happen. He's now down to 38 seconds. Scott Dixon up there on 69. 
Nice. <laughs> that ain't really nice. At one point, Sky just had 69 pushed past seconds left. Uh, we're probably going to run Blue Metric again. Just we both stream on Mondays. Something to do with gearbox or driveline issues, and finally terminal for Felix Rosenquist. There's the gap, the nine to the fifteen. It was just not a good day for Warren. Here he comes. There you go, Ryan Hunter A. Doing the right thing, lifting off the throttle. Remember, he doesn't have to do that. I know Graham's upset, but that wasn't actually a requirement from Ryan. That was him being a pal, not wanting to get involved in this fight. And it's still only 1.6 seconds up to Scott Dixon. Scott didn't pull away when he got by Ryan. Exactly. You're the team. You got to calm your driver down. Tell Graham Ray Hall, listen, you can go smack runner Hunter Ray around after the race. Let's keep two hands on the wheel and go get Dixon. And I just, I just think, or I just think. Thirty-nine seconds left for Dixon. Thirty-three. <clears throat> obviously, Dixon had more push to pass, but Seven I think the problem was the new attires compared to. This is going to be one of the classics. Very hard not having these set of threads. Superman deep on the brakes. Now Graham Ray Hall will have the I think if Graham Ray Hall had fresh air threads, he could have won. But he's got to be patient. He's got to be smart. He only has three good hits of push to pass left. <laughs> and then you see all the cars in the Lavex City Series race. From the driver of the 29. Now just a few lightning strikes fight. just inside Best the eight mile area. Three laps to go. Get him, buddy. They say get him. That's the call. Even standing water as of lightning pass. For the first time in six years, he said, Then I've heard such a reason. Pass. And to be reminded that I still belong. I still have a place in IndyCar. Well, Graham, you're just three laps away from maybe breaking a six year drought in victories. And can you imagine if Graham wins this thing by passing, tracking down, and passing Scott Dixon? I just don't think he have a tire left. If he had a fresh set of reds. <laughs> I think he would have. This is the key overtaking point. <laughs> Excuse me, I think he would have got him, but he didn't have enough tire. However, and Scott Dixon, can he sustain the pressure? He have a gas. got something special over there in turn seven. That because he kept Charlie Dixon to save, save, save. The key overtaking point. Big long radius corner here, turn four. It really challenges all four Firestones. But Dixon, I like the shot at F1 Ray Hall took. He said it was a fun they battle without that DRS on set. Or something like that. I, I just found out funny. It was a year ago at Nashville where Scott Dixon because that straight right there was the DRS straight when uh, the US Grand Prix was at Indianapolis. All time on the wins list. Now look at this. Graham Ray Hall says. I'm not sure if I'm going to let you win in a 19th season. I want this win, but it's not going to come easy. I just thought, I just think Ray Hall's highest to two years. Ray Hall is throwing everything at it, but the overtaking opportunities have run out. What a comeback from Scott Dixon after spinning on the opening lap. And in 19 consecutive Look seasons, at a beautiful march of victory. Scott Dixon is going to be a winner again. Spin to win. Dixon has done it in Indy. Spinning on the opening lap to seeing the yard of bricks first. Nothing, nothing is too big for Scott Dixon in the IndyCar series. And if you're Graham Ray Hall, this is why I love IndyCar. You don't give these battles to F1. Right today, he beat his team. Huh. He beat <clears throat> McLaren, and this is going to be frustrating. Great drive. Look at that. Great sportsmanship there. Giving the thumbs up to Scott. And huge respect. He yeah. knows he's witnessing greatness right in front of him. You've done a spin and win to win at Indy. How did you do it? Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, huge credit to the team. You know, we weren't sure even on the first run there. I will say I had a, I had a fantastic start. I think I got up to like eighth or ninth and then uh, got T-boned in, in turn seven there. But uh, huge credit to the, to the team. You know, it's been a trying year for us. Just where things could have rolled our way, they haven't. But uh, they, never gave, they never give up. So... Big thank you to, to everybody on the PNC Bank number nine. Honda was amazing today. It was so fun driving my Honda out there today, getting the fuel mileage, cruising along, uh, and, you know, fantastic pace. The only problem there towards the end, I think, on my outlaps, I pushed it too hard to, to kind of create that gap on, on uh, Graham and unfortunately burnt the tires off a little bit. So it was pretty sketchy at the end, but uh, we, we tried to put, a put on a show for everyone. Watch the Bomberito Automotive Group 500 Sunday, August 27th at 3.30 p.m. I miss up the night race. It's a week oilless here. So yeah, that was... Um, 
IndyCar. Um, now we can talk some NASCAR. <sighs> um, Vidal won. I know Hamlin. <clears throat> Was it first stage or second stage? Hamlet won. I know Hamlet won a stage. I just forget what stage it was. Second stage. Medal won the first stage. That's right. I remember laughing at Danny because he missed a turn, but he still won the stage. I was like, oh, come on. Suarez finished second. Oh, sorry, for Chase finished second. Um. Good race. Maybe what's huh? Where my cat? All right, now let's watch the NASCAR highlight. This is also a good race. It was just a good weekend of racing. Next year, I'll get better at covering drag racing. I just keep forgetting. I think for next year, I'm going to print out each schedule for NASCAR, for IndyCar, F1, and HRA. So that way... Uh, excuse me. I can plan uh, better. Or find a way to have it all on my phone. Because I have NASCAR, IndyCar, and F1 on my phone. Well, most of the time I have. The NASCAR IndyCar F1 schedule on my phone. Um, all right, I was gonna. We're gonna cover NASCAR. For the ones searching for the products you need, Granger.com is always there for you. Granger.com. Here they come. Like I said, I do not understand save our resort zone. Hang on, does uh, NBC have highlights in 1080p? Here they come. Into there we the go. From Indy. We're racing on the road course. Don't know why NASCAR does it have the um. The highlights to a good start. Three car lengths entering in each in seven, ten, ten eighty. I was seven twenty, but they do. Anyways, um, decent crowd from the Oscar race. Look at that's contact SVG down on the inside there. Trying to make I just think early. from any cart race was a little under so because people like me Lowski, don't just think that they go to that like for any red horse, but twice a year. It's too many times versus where we go to this track last year. <clears throat> Not this lap, but the second lap, you'll see Logano tried to fit too wide where too wide should not be. Too wide works. Kobayashi gets turned around in the 67. This is a third 2311 and uh, third 2311 entry is Justin Haley big off. And that was also a caution. I mean, he was able to drive away, but you saw the tire barrier had to be repaired. I think it's wild that these cars produce so much horsepower, but when he refired the engine, you can see the grass. Yeah, I don't know what. I, I, I'm a Legato fan, but I don't know what the hell Legato was doing there. Like. Contact with Haley. Like there's no reason Pushes to go Haley too wide into that that narrow of a chicane. Watch as he hits these tar barriers. 
Those things are great when you hit them head on, but you, when you hit them sideways, it just pulls them apart from each other. We saw on the initial lap, Chase Elliott opting to not do that through that corner, not go side by side through there. Kobayashi. Gets <laughs> I wonder why right Chase didn't go side by side. Car. Chase is probably thinking to himself, well, it, now we know why we don't go side by side in that right chicane. <laughs> I've had the interest in the cast two turns. I think it's four, five, four, and five. Start. So yeah, but Logano showed you why. Steve, what are we expecting? Well, I think you're gonna. Dale mentioned we're gonna see Rice racing. This was for only caution. Calms things down in turn one. It does anything but right here leaving the zone. One green flag, green flag, green flag, green. Two by two, not as big a jump that time for Daniel Suarez. As Reddick's able to stay right behind him, now he changes legs. I just, uh, I just understand right the aggressive for both IndyCar and NASCAR drivers this past weekend. The second restart for these drivers. Look Especially that oh, earlier race. The back of his teammate, Ryan Blaney. Feel going to have damage. And we'll see if everybody's able to get around I find it interesting the that they use a blue flag green. instead of a white flag or a local caution. The 34 trying to outbreak Suarez for the lead. I think NASCAR needs local caution. I think all series that go on their horses. Any car NASCAR Will need it. Need to, like F1 does, bring it to sectors. A new leader at Indy. Michael McDowell out front. Yeah, good pace so like that have been sector one yellow, but obviously try clear because Logano just Very fun to lose. They've spin to win. Like uh, Dixon did. Man, if only Dixon could have won earlier. And more times this year, maybe he will win the championship. I guess it's just kind of curse. Down that long back it's kind of interesting in how fast seven, big gap. How aggressive SVG gets with Bowman. Monumental start for front on the swipe fin it on the uh, the first straightaways. They get pretty fast for front row motorsports as well as the first stage win for Michael McDowell. So a big stage win there, and again, there won't be a caution. No, yeah, that's I, I honestly like the no cautions after a stage. Point. I wish you yeah, went to ovals. Battling among the bubble as well for the 99 car. That's critical points early in stage one. So because as soon as Martin tricks you and cross the line, if it was an oval, they would have a caution. And there's a lot of road to be gained when you come on to pit road. Well, right here you see. But it's there. honestly McDowell refreshing to not see. Yeah. Between the nine and the five, the nine ran a couple laps longer, and I think I ended up. Oh boy, flashbacks. Larson. This wasn't. Really that close before the green flag cycle. Oh, I was interested sorry, I forgot. We tab out. It went away. Uh -huh. cycle. I was interested to see that five car trying that pass in the braking zone on the outside. If he could position himself on the right side of the nine for the next few corners, he might have been able to take the spot away. But right now, looks like the five of Larson just a little bit quicker than Chase. Bell out in front next season, I'll get better company Dillon NASCAR. Denny Hamlin is third. Those <coughs> three have not been. Next week, I'll just have to use the highlights because I'll be at Hellas for the race. Kislowski, who was on pit lane on lap three, but he is currently running in the fourth position. Then Suarez and McDowell, we knew because those we're meeting up around three, the so front. probably gonna leave uh, they have been around two. Four position, uh, once Suarez I just come off, off stream, I was telling things McDowell to get to the meetup place, him, but the gap is very close from you, uh, you know, you can't get away uh, from my house. Spot. There's a spin right there, the 16th car. Back it up! This is over in the NASCAR oval number one. I thought it was just going to be a caution because I thought he got himself stuck. Coming in to turn 11. Here it is. Contact. 12, he did crash. So Jeff, that was him jumping on the radio. He's going to get back to that 12. I love Sunday beef. Oh, and he missed the corner. Yeah, see, I was just saying earlier, I laughed at this, but... He still wants to say jump for Chant Lee. Brad offline in the dirt, his tires are dirty. Here comes the 99. They're all right there. And Brad, and then Brad said, Hey, the and then Brad missed it. Then Brad pulled a hand when they missed the turn. The corner big right there, slid the rear tires. Here comes Brad. Brad offline in the dirt, his tires are dirty. Here comes the 99. They're all right there. How much will Suarez wait? 
Or will he be aggressive early? He looks to the inside now. Be patient here, man. I mean, the main reason I don't like covering NASCAR is much because of idiotic tackle. playoffs. Oh, Brad's going to miss the corner. Here comes the 34, McDowell. McDowell gets by the 99 of Suarez. McDowell now will be leading once these two come to pit road. But again, yeah, I don't know Sam if you start, so I guess it worked. Okay, cut it. eBay Motors. Graphene. You'll need headlights. And a bumper. At least you can skip the car wash. Get the right parts of the right That took me way too many takes, that commercial. And unfortunately, Denny Hamlin won the second stage. Yes, that's what I get for laughing at him. I know they know it. Are they communicating it for uh, missing the turn? McDowell is going to take the top spot away from Denny Hamlin. McDowell back out front at Indy. Suarez recognizes that Yeah, if that's basically a winning pass. You see him into the back of the nine car. Didn't knock him out of the way, but hey, man, I'm here. You're holding me up. Suarez. Just wants to keep applying pressure on these breaking And it cuts off this week. But we still got we got MLS back. That's a lot of pressure. He sends him out of the way. Wow. Suarez takes the spot from Chase Elliott. Larson just went by him and we were talking and looking at as we have an issue here. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. just in front of that 15 of Jensen Button. You look at the issue that took place here. A little contact there. Maybe a little bit more here. I mean, he lives up to there. his name. <clears throat> they call him Recky Spinhouse for a reason. He wrecked and spun someone. Guy. And you know, you can say, well, they had two pit stops. Well, that's not a break. You have to focus um, on your pit road speed. Basically, you get about so. 10 seconds while you're sitting in the middle. Oh. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. sends Kamui Kobayashi. I mean, he not wrecked one, but two drivers. Like, Ricky Sinhouse wondered why he has that many friends on the track. It's because of crap like that. Serious, XM. I didn't even know if it had an ass car. I thought it had an Indy car. I wish I was. I, I think I'm tired of a nice guy, but I wish it was so bush. So he can perform in the break zone here. Like this car really ruined his career because it wasn't even driver with the dominant car here but today. it wasn't absorbing the the energy Kobe like it should have for drivers were. Uh, and I hope it, this is the case with Simon, but for Kurt Busch, you know, it ended his career because of the concussion. I mean, I hope it's not the same for Simon, but. Makes you wonder if kind of how similar the situations were. Although, when you look at Clint Bush's crash, I don't think it was that bad. I'd assume the re rear wasn't absorbing. For the final time. Yeah, if we were not absorbing like it should. The 38 year old is going to win at Indianapolis. I just lost the 10 car. I just love Eric Amarola just stopped right by the celebrating crew. Now, it's, it's just hilarious. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe. To we the definitely filmed this YouTube during channel. the uh, championship race because that's Phoenix. There comes a time in every dip's life when it's ready to leave the slow cooker, even buffalo yeah. chicken dip. So we put juicy chicken, uh, buffalo uh, sauce, and cheese like... in a portable crispy golden uh, shell. Big stretch. Run away, dip. You're free now. Sonic 299 Buffalo Chicken Dip Bites. Yeah, so... That's that. Um, I guess we can move on to your feature prediction portion. Where I try to predict your future. All right, do the Bengals have a psych preseason game this week? Yeah, on Friday.
I think they went the second preseason game 28 to 14. And then Darwin gets a. Actually, no, first it'd be NASCAR. Um. Because that's what says free men kick off as a 739. I think Chase Elliott's going to squeak his way to the playoffs on win of Glenn. So it's going to be Hendrick 1 2 with Larson in second. And I think Logano is going to rebound with rounding off a podium. I'm going to do podium, sir, Indy, or excuse me, NASCAR when it's a, uh, <sighs> and yes, I am putting, yes, y'all have to see the way I'm putting Joe Logano. It's pretty funny. Yes. And I think FCC sweeps Hose Real with a score of 3 to 1. Oh, I guess it'll be 1 free since 1 road. Um. But yeah. <clears throat> that will. No, Scream Dog goes live. Haven't rated her in a hot minute. Why is it like that? Her. I'm just used to the metric going. So, yeah, we're going to read Scream Dog on the metric. So, yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. <clears throat> Excuse me. God bless. I still believe that Jesus is Lord, and I will see you guys tomorrow at 4 p.m., not 5 p.m. Remember, Tuesday is the only time I stream at 4 p.m. for some two-point campus. Uh, um, new DLC coming out in a few days, but obviously we'll try it out next week. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye!